Uh, it seems like private equity is slowly destroying automotive companies and YouTube channels. Do you have a take on it? How is your relationship with MP? Is there any impending doom coming? There's always impending doom. Yeah, I do have a take on this, and I've I've been noticing this growing. I don't know what uh, it's this idea or uh, rumor or impression that private equity is ruining all this stuff. So I think I, I think private equity has a terrible PR problem right now, and certainly in the in the automotive aftermarket community has become sort of the scapegoat to blame um, any company's failure or a lot of changes that we've been seeing. Um, there are horrible private equities, like awful, terrible ones, and there are amazing, great ones. And I would say from my experience, most private equities that and now I, I kind of live in that world. Um, I have I play a role with our private equity and helping you know, go do new acquisitions and bring in other companies into our group. Um, and my impression is that most of the private equities are good and um, honest and um, certainly not out to destroy companies. But I think that is the impression that's been given. And a lot of this is propagated by stuff you see in movies, you know, of like a company, just a, a private equity investment group buying a company and firing everyone and slashing costs and making everyone work three times as hard. Um, there's a movie I was watching the other day, um, who's in it, um, with, uh, Bill Burr and his two other guys and they own a, a t-shirt company and they sell it to a private equity. And the first day they come in, the guy fires half the staff yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So, um, I, I've seen some of the stuff with the YouTube channels and YouTube changing. I mean, YouTube themselves and Google have disrupted more social media earnings than anyone. I mean, you can go read some of the stuff Matt Farah has, has written or talked about in the past 10 years about how he, you know, he just woke up one morning and he went from making $10,000 a month to nothing or whatever the numbers are oh, from an right algorithm. Switch. Yeah, yeah. And they just, they just changed the ad model overnight. Um, the, the disruptions in the automotive aftermarket media are nothing new. Um, you know, automotive magazines were a thing. When, in, in, in the year 2000, there was like five awesome Volkswagen Audi tuner magazines yep. that I would get every month. They were thick and they were filled with amazing content and they had events and they would invite us to go compete and they would give us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, you know, they would spend thousands yeah. of dollars running these events, tens of thousands of dollars. But by 2010, all of that was gone. I mean, all those magazines now, literally everyone, I think, I, th I think performance VW is still around, but they're like kind of a European. So they, yeah. And then, and then European car, Euro tuner, Several others, all aren't what's left of them is now known as Super Street. And I think Super Street's dying too. I don't know. I, I don't even know if they still have a magazine. Like they're all, they've all gone online. So none of that had to do with private equity. So these, I just want to make the point that disruptions in our industry are nothing new. Um, private equity entered the Volkswagen Audi aftermarket, uh, I would say about 10 years ago, um, starting uh, with like ECS and APR. Um, APR was taken over by private equity in like 2013, 2014. Um, ECS was sold around the same time. Um, and you know, I know a lot of people hate ECS, but ECS is around, they're thriving, they're growing. They, they have only hired more people. They have acquired other companies like Turner and Pelican Parts and AMS. Who? Or not AMS. There's some other like Nissan companies in there. Oh yeah, and then they they've acquired um, Z Z1 Z1 USP. Um, USP was USP was acquired by the old owners of ECS, who are now out there buying up companies and trying to start their own thing. But anyways, um, you know, so 
if private equity was so terrible, you know, ECS would be out of business, APR would be gone, Dynan would be gone. Um, actually, Dynan, I think, was the very first company. I, I think Dynan sold in like 2010 or something. For us, the group that we're a part of has been amazing. Um, when when I set out to sell 034, and it wasn't because I didn't want to do 034 anymore. It wasn't because I was tired of 034. It was because there were things that I wanted to do that I needed millions of dollars of investment to do. And I didn't have that. I'm, I'm just one guy who's done pretty well over the years, but got a little bit of set, set aside for retirement didn't have enough money set aside for my kids for college. Um, wasn't sure how I was ever going to retire. And so I, I needed to bring in someone else's money to help us do all the amazing things you guys have seen us do over the last four years. And so um, I had a strong vision for the future. I knew what I wanted to do. And I went out and looked for a group that was willing to invest in us while continuing to let us do what we do best to run and be zero three four motorsports so it's been amazing from our point of view um, there is no doom um, on the zero three four fronts and we are currently bringing in other companies into the group as well and giving them the tools and resources that they need to do the greatest things that they've ever done um, so i think this idea that private equity is terrible and that private equity put Recaro out of business and BBI, you know, it's, it's probably not true. I don't know all the ins and outs um, behind Recaro, but I'll, I'll tell you, I'll finish this up because I could talk all day about this. Um, the goal of private equity is, is to buy a company, grow it and sell it for more money at, at some point in the future. So growth is typically always good for a company. Um, if you work for a company and it grows, that's really the only way that you can get more opportunity. If you want to be promoted, if you want raises, if you want good benefits, uh, if you want 401k matching, companies that are shrinking or that stay the same aren't able to offer those type of benefits. Um, if you'd like to go from being an individual contributor in a certain department to managing that department to being a, a VP to eventually going being promoted into the C-suite, you're going to have to work for a company that's growing, you know, at least at least 5% a year or 10% a year to, to have that type of opportunity. So the goal of private equity, it's the same as someone who's like a fit, flipping a house, right? You, you want to buy a house for $100,000, invest $100,000 into it. And it's so nice now that it's now worth 400,000. And so you sell it and your profit is 200,000 minus whatever additional expenses on top of it. That's the goal of private equity. So it doesn't really benefit private equity to, to buy a company slash the, the staff and expenses to a point where it can't grow, right? Like how, how does a company grow? Well, not when it's understaffed a company cannot grow if it doesn't have enough employees. Um, so, Private equity doesn't come in, slash the expenses, jack up the profit, and then just try to milk it for a couple of years. What happens when you do that is a company slowly dies, sometimes fast, sometimes slower. But at the end of it, the private equity is stuck holding, you know, a raisin of a company that used to be a grape. And that's not a good position for them. That's not where they make their money. So when you see successful private equity implementations, they go in, they invest, they grow the company it thrives and then they sell to the next bigger investment group who can continue to grow the company and take it to the next level eventually all these companies amass into a into a conglomerate that goes public which is what you saw with holly which apr and dynan are part of holly holly went public two years ago um, and that that was uh, this half a billion dollar mass of aftermarket companies that was able to go public and that's no longer private equity anymore. It's public, public equity. So um, good question. Thanks for asking. I just ask everyone to be a little skeptical and not, not just get outraged at yeah. how private equity is ruining everything. There are, there are bad ones, but it, that's a really kind of simple explanation to explain a, a market that's transitioning. I mean, you talk about YouTube. If you're a YouTube influencer right now and you're making a certain amount of money every month, you got to keep your eye out because private equity is not ruining that. You know, there is, there is change coming constantly. Uh, one of the, the companies in our group, Google changed their algorithm for the AdWords search and it completely like upended their revenue. 
because they couldn't serve ads the same way as they were before. So there, there's we live in a very volatile time, and there's a lot of volatility in the economy and in industry out there. Um, private equity definitely plays some part in that, but they don't they don't explain it all. And there's private companies that are going out of business all the time. Privately held companies um, are struggling. They spend too much money. They go out of business. Yeah, so, um, anyways, thanks for listening. Um, all right. Anything we should jump on? Number two is a quick follow up. Yeah. So never sell zero three four, please. Well, it's too late. We we did sell it. I did sell it, but um, I still run it. Uh, it's still my company. Uh, nothing happens here that that I don't I don't uh, control or approve. Um, and you know th that was very important to me. I didn't want I didn't want to sell zero three four to somebody who was going to do something bad with it or absorb it into another. And, and I had those kind of offers. There was one, one group in particular that was like, we'd like to buy zero three four, shut down the, the facilities. We'll pay you to go off in the distance. And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm ready to do my greatest work. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, sailing off in the sunset yet. So yeah, I mean, since, since the SIM, we've done things like the mobile flashing, our mm -hmm. entire server has come online or, you know, it's, it's been huge shifts, um, and, and leaps forward since that happened. We've released like 2,000 new hardware products. Yeah, you know, just, it, only, it only just, you know, put the accelerator to pedal down on what we were able to do. Yeah, we've grown our inventory almost 20 times, the, the, our, the value of our inventory. So the products that we have in stock has grown 10 times. Ima imagine, um, you know, the company of today with, you know, a, a tiny 5% of the inventory. You know? So now it's been a great thing for us. Uh, I posted about this on Facebook recently. I would put a lot, some of the blame on the people who sell companies. I think people make bad deals. They um, they they agree to terms that ultimately will screw them. Um, I could I could tell you a lot of stories. I want out individual people. That's not my goal here. But um, there, there's a lot of times the people that you hear complaining the most about private equity aren't taking accountability for the bad deal they made and. And the mistake they made and, and who they were dealing with and the type of deal so i i had a very stringent deal i had a lot of demands and requirements um that that i that i that were deal breakers for me that i wouldn't do and as a result i found a great group and we have a great um uh, opportunity to work with with uh, and a group of investors who invest in us who look to us um, on on what will be successful and how the money should be spent, uh, and then we have, we have accountability on how we spend that money and what we do with it, and then the financial returns we create. But um, this is, this is all just simple business out, out in the rest of the world. Uh, this is how business and industry runs, and the things all the things you enjoy, like your phone and the service you have, and the food you eat, and where you shop. I mean, these are all. Private equity. These have all been created by some type of private equity investment at some point. And the great thing is, um, the great thing about private equity is it's people willing to take their money and invest it to make people like us more successful and to make products and services more broadly available. So there's a really good side to private equity too, and I don't ever hear anyone talking about. That. But like I said, there's some douchebags out there, and you should not you should not sell your company to them.